Hey guys, Aki here with another quick tech video. Today we'll be going over monostable circuits, one of Minecraft's most useful redstone circuits. We'll be going over what they are, how they work, and what they're actually used for. If you're just looking on how to build them, I have a timestamp in the description or timestamp on screen that you can skip to. Anyways, let's get started. So what is a monostable circuit? A monostable circuit is a small circuit, as you can see here, designed to reduce an input pulse to a shortened output pulse. If I flick this lever, you'll note that we get a long pulse, but a short output pulse. Go one more time, we get a long pulse here, so we get a lever pulse, but only a single tick output. Functions as well with buttons. So we get a long button pulse, lasting for a few ticks, but we only get one output. Um, there's lots of different types of uh, monostable circuits, which we'll be going over in a second, but this right here is known at what is known as a rising edge monostable circuit, meaning it only functions at the start of a pulse. So if I place the lever down, when I first flip the lever, I get a tick, but there's no tick for the rest of the pulse. Monostable circuits can be used in a lot of different uh, redstone contraptions. They are most prominent in double piston extenders and T flip flops. If you're looking for a T flip flop, which converts a button like pulse into a lever like output or a constant output, then I'll leave a link to a video on those in the description. Otherwise, let's have a look at some other types of monostable circuits. What you've just seen is what's known as a rising edge monostable circuit. There are three different types of monostable circuits rising edge, falling edge, and dual edge. Rising edge, like we saw before, activates at the start of a pulse, at the end. Falling edge activates only at the end of a pulse, and a dual edge activates at both the start and end of the pulse. Now that we have a pretty good idea of what a monostable circuit is and how they work, let's get into some builds. So firstly we're going to build this super simple little monostable circuit design. So take a lever, redstone, run that into this sticky piston and this single block on top, a repeater on the way out, and a redstone lamp. You can have a repeater on either side, it doesn't actually matter, but there needs to be one on at least one side. Click this lever, powers the piston and the block for one tick, or the piston rises up and the pulse can no longer pass through and you get a single tick pulse. This next design, albeit a bit more complicated, is definitely my go-to design. First you can start by placing your lever or an input coming through here. Sticky piston facing like this. An observer facing straight up so the red dot's on top. Now, this part, it's up to you whether you want a rising, falling or dual edge design. If you want a falling edge design, place your block like this with a redstone dust on top. Check on an output here. We get a falling edge design. Rising edge design with the opposite, so the blocks over there. Make sure you got redstone on top of both these blocks. And as you can see here, you can use a glass block to run the redstone over as an observer cannot power through a transparent block. And if you want a dual edge design, Make both these a full block, full block. This last design is super simple and even allows for a silent and tileable design. So first take this block here with our input. Make sure your input is powering this block and not the dropper. Take a dropper facing straight up with a hopper facing into the dropper. Take a flat grey wall or any block with a comparator facing out, so we have a comparator facing out of this hopper into our output. Now we place an item in this dropper, like so. Power this to get a small rising edge design. Make sure you don't power the hopper the dropper directly or it will lock the hopper and the design won't work. So guys, that's pretty much it for this quick tech video on monostable circuits. Thank you so much for tuning in and I really hope this has helped you understand. If you're looking for other quick tech videos on more useful redstone circuits, I'll leave a link in the description to the playlist which has all of them.
Hope you learned something new. Thanks.